Welcome to Children's Liturgy of the Word. I'm so glad you can join me today. Merry Christmas! Did you know that Christmas is such a special time for the church that it lasts more than just one day? Christmas season lasts about two weeks. This year, it will be Christmas all the way up to January 10th. So you can keep enjoying Christmas a little while longer. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. This is a good day to remember that your family is a holy family too. Every family is a holy family because the love you have for each other makes your family holy. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, you care for us and protect us like a mother and father. Teach us to be kind and patient, honest and gentle, and most of all, at peace with the people with whom we live. This is our prayer to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's chosen people, holy and well-loved. Therefore, be kind and patient with one another. Be honest and gentle with one another. Forgive each other as God has forgiven you. And most of all, love one another. Let the peace of Christ be in your hearts and always be thankful. Let the word of Christ, which is so wonderful, live in you. Help each other to grow and to become better. Everything you say or do do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, and always give thanks to God through Jesus. Wives and husbands, love one another and take care of each other, because this is what God asks of you. Children, obey your parents, because this is what God asks of you. Parents, be patient and gentle with your children so that they will be encouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, and it was possibly written while Paul was in prison in Rome. That must have been a very hard time in Paul's life, but his letter is full of so much hope and joy. It's a wonderful explanation of how to live as members of a loving family and as children of God. Paul reminds the Colossians that they are God's chosen people, holy and well-loved. That message is for us too, and we all need to remember it. Because God loves us and chose us, we are holy. What does it mean to be holy? It means to live the way God wants us to live. So how does God want us to live? It's really pretty simple. Be kind. Be patient. Be honest and gentle. Forgive one another. And most of all, love one another. These are simple tasks. God isn't asking you to do something big. God is just asking you to be nice. Even my three-year-old grandchildren know how to be nice. But let's be honest, it isn't easy to be nice all the time. Sometimes something happens and we are angry and we want to hurt someone with our words or with our hands. I know I feel that way sometimes. But St. Paul has some good advice for that, too. He says, let the peace of Christ be in your hearts and always be thankful. God has planted a seed of love in your heart. If you take care of that seed, 
it will grow into a wonderful plant. Being thankful for all of your blessings helps that seed to grow. As the seed grows, it gets easier and easier to be holy. And while you are growing into a holy person, you can help other people become holier too. Maybe a brother or sister, maybe a friend, maybe even someone you won't meet again will notice your kindness and it could change their heart. Above all, love one another. That's the number one message that Paul wants us to have today. Next, we're going to hear about something that happened very early in Jesus' life. Our gospel acclamation, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to God and to make an offering of two turtle doves. That same day, a man named Simeon came to the temple. He was a good and holy man and was waiting for the Messiah to come. When Simeon saw the child Jesus, he took him in his arms and praised God. He said, Now, God, you have kept your promise. I have seen the Savior. He is the light of the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' mother and father were amazed at what Simeon said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, this child will be a sign for all the people of Israel. Some people will accept him and be saved. Others will reject him. And in your heart, you will suffer because of this. There was also a holy woman, a prophetess named Anna, who was in the temple. When she saw the child, she too began to praise God. And she talked about him to everyone who was waiting for the Messiah to come. Mary and Joseph went back to Nazareth, and the child Jesus grew in size and strength. He was filled with the wisdom and grace of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a great story from the Gospel according to Luke. And you need to understand that it was traditional for Jewish parents to bring their first baby boy to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to God. In this story, we learned what happened when they did that with Jesus. And we meet a few interesting characters. The first person we meet is a very old man named Simeon. The Gospel tells us that Simeon was a good and holy man who was waiting for the Messiah. He believed God had promised him that he would not die until after he had seen the Messiah. So then he held the baby Jesus in his arms and he praised God. He called Jesus the Savior and the light of the Gentiles and the glory of Israel. That's a lot to say about a tiny baby. The Gospel tells us that Mary and Joseph were amazed. Can you imagine? There might have even been other parents there that day presenting their baby boys to the temple. But Simeon chose Jesus to say these special words. After Simeon, we meet another interesting person. A woman who was a prophet named Anna. Anna was also a very old woman, and she was very holy. She met the baby Jesus and recognized how special he was. Like Simeon, she praised God, and she talked about Jesus to everyone. 
Mary and Joseph went back home after these adventures, and they lived a quiet life with Jesus. We don't know much about Jesus during the years he was a child, but he was probably a lot like other boys in that time. He was a human being, just like us. And he grew and ran and played and got sick and did all of the things that we do. I started today by telling you that every family is a holy family. Today, as we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, we can look at Jesus and Mary and Joseph and see what it truly means to be holy. It's easy to think of the Holy Family as leading perfect lives. They were blessed by God. It must have been very easy. But when we talk about the Holy Family, we're talking about a family that struggled and suffered, just like so many of us. They weren't rich or important. They didn't live in a fancy house. They had to work hard to survive. The Holy Family shares our burdens, but they also uplift us by their example. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were never alone. They endured everything through the grace of God. They prayed. They hoped. They trusted in God's will. Through all their hardships, in a time of anxiety and difficulty, persecution and tragedy, a time that's a lot like now, they showed us how to be people of faith, people of forgiveness, people of love. I hope that God will be just as close to your holy family today and throughout the coming year. Let us pray together. As brothers and sisters in one living fa loving family, together let us pray to our Heavenly Father. For the church throughout the world, that it may be a living example of God's love for all, welcoming all people, and seeing that everyone is important and has a contribution to offer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that they may help and support each other to grow in wisdom and teach each other to see beyond appearances to what really matters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, family, and friends, that we may be willing to see the importance of all people and look for Christ in each person, no matter what they look like, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and for all those who have died, especially any of our families and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Take a moment now to think of any special prayers you might have and lift them up quietly to God with us. Ask God to bless your holy family. For all of these special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, watch over your children gathered before you today. Fill us with your love and help us to do your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us now pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, how, excuse me, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Keep on having a wonderful Christmas. I hope that we will all have a very happy new year as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.